Death is the enemy. The first enemy and the last. The enemy always wins. And we still need to fight him. You're scared, aren't you? What are you scared of? Hey guys, Pete here. This is going to be my Game of Thrones Season 7, Episode 6 trailer breakdown. This will obviously contain spoilers for everything that's happened in Game of Thrones through Season 7, Episode 5. So if you're not caught up, you're going to want to stop watching. So we're going to go through all the shots, basically a frame by frame, look at what we saw, and then we'll have a discussion afterwards about what we've learned about the upcoming episode. So the trailer opens with a shot of John north of the wall, and we hear a voiceover from Barrett. He says, death is the enemy. Then we see the group of guys walking across the landscape. Looks pretty amazing up there. As we see them from the front, we see that the hound is leading them, and we get this shot of them looking on. We see that it's the mountain that's shaped like an arrowhead that we heard about in the hound's vision and the flames. So that had been a mystery with different theories going around, but we can see that it was just some mountain up north that no one really knew about until they got there. The voiceover picks up again, and Beric says the first enemy and the last. We get a quick flash over to the map room at Dragonstone, where Tyrion is watching Daenerys looking out the window. We see a shot of Tyrion, who's deep in thought. He turns to Daenerys, who looks like she has to make a decision. There's really no other clues here, so we'll just say that that's what's going on for the moment. The voiceover is still going. It says the enemy always wins. And we see an important shot of John spinning around. I say it's important because it marks the time of the other events, I think. As he does, we see the White Army coming in their direction. They're sort of coming through a cut there. And there are a lot of them. Then we see Beric actually speaking, and the voiceover picks up, and we still need to fight them. So the entirety of it is death is the enemy, the first enemy and the last, the enemy always wins, and we still need to fight him. So it's pretty prophetic, I guess you could say. I mean, he's talking about the fact that they don't really have a chance, but they still have to take on the enemy anyways. We see our band of fighters taking a defensive position, and then we cut to an outside shot of Winterfell, and we hear Arya do a voiceover that says, You're scared, aren't you? As she's saying this, we see Sansa closing a door, and the voiceover continues to say, What are you scared of? As she sees this, we see shots of the Hound, Jorah, and the rest of the bunch, and then we see a white attack. There's a shot of the Hound and Tormund beating them down. Winter is here flashes between the cuts in bold letters in the Game of Thrones font. We see Jon clash with one of the White Walkers, which is interesting because of the fact that we don't see his sword destroy the White Walker's weapon. We see one of Gendry putting his Warhammer to good use. Then we get a quick scene where it's a little bit hard to tell what's going on, but it's probably the Night's Watch brothers running towards the gate to open it with torches. You can't really make out who this is or what's going on, but in the context of everything we've seen, it seems most likely that it would be them opening the gate for someone who's coming back. We see Arya and Sansa. Arya is kind of staring her down. This is probably in relation to the voiceover, but also in relation to that scroll we saw Arya take from Littlefinger in the last episode. Then we cut to the iconic shot of Beric with his flaming sword, again from the Winter is Here trailer. There are a horde of whites coming into the opening, and at first when I looked at this, like I thought it was the Night King they were following, but if you look closely, it actually looks like it's Jon running away. This ties into that shot earlier I said that might be important where he first sees them 
And it looks like they descend on him right away. Like he almost gets ended right there. I can't tell for sure, but it looks like it's that same scene, just from a different angle. You know what I mean? The continuation of that from a different angle. We then see him running and find out what that was all about. We saw this a couple times in the trailers. We see the shot where Tormund comes in behind him. They're all running. In the distance, we can see others also still there going, which all leads me to believe that this is the very beginning of the battle. Like, when we saw John turn, he wasn't doing anything, so I think this is where they're being attacked, and they end up going towards that little bit of higher ground to take the defensive position. Of course, we can't be sure because it's a little bit screwy, and in the one scene where they're cutting back and forth, where we see them all up on top of that, or what we assume is up on top of that, they look like they're just waiting, like it's not happening right at that moment, so it's hard to tell. But anyways, we do see people running in the background, and then we get the big Night King's entrance. We see one of the other White Walkers on horseback there on the field, and if we look behind him, we see there's a ton of other activity on that hill or incline or whatever you want to call it behind him. It's not easy to say what he's looking at in front of him, and I don't think anything in this trailer really gives us a firm answer to that question. So then it fades to black and we end right there. First of all, it goes without saying that this looks like a crazy trailer, and we pretty much expect that from the season's penultimate episode. It seems like they've laid the groundwork now for what's going to happen post the big battle that we're about to see, as in they're supposed to catch one of these whites and take it to King's Landing to show it to Cersei. So that'll be like the finale stuff. It was expected to be that way anyways from what we saw from the filming. So this is going to be mostly a Battle Beyond the Wall episode, which looks pretty freaking amazing. A couple of things that stood out right away for a lot of different people that I've seen commenting about this. One was that the Hound is swinging a hammer in that first shot where we see him hit that white. A lot of people are saying, well, is that Gendry's Warhammer? He came back into the series just to go north of the wall and die. I don't think we could say that for sure. I did look at both of the screenshots and you can't tell for sure, but it kind of seems like in the way that it's set up that this is a first encounter. Of course, that can be completely misleading, but the thing I was thinking about after the fact was, is didn't they need dragon glass for something? Like, weren't they going to build weapons and go up there and use it? So the reason why he's using something we're not used to seeing him use could be because it's a dragon glass weapon. I don't know. I mean, honestly, when we see J Gendry later using his hammer, it's clearly his hammer, which doesn't make a lot of sense. And then you have Beric fighting with his sword. So I'm not really sure what they're... Maybe they just don't understand what's going on yet. But hitting them with a regular hammer and hitting them with a regular sword shouldn't really be the most effective way to fight this battle. And Jon seemed to know that with his whole wanting to get Dragonglass. So who knows what's going on with that. Either way, I don't think we see real evidence that Gendry's going to die. I think someone's going to die. The odds are way too stacked against them for everyone to come back. But I don't think it shows us here who that's going to be. I mean, you know, you could kind of look through the thing and see that some people have way less of a chance to survive than others. Like, I don't think John's going to die. Gendry seems a little bit safer than most since he just came back. Thoros and Beric have kind of fulfilled their role in a way. They went north. They've got uh, the Hound to have his redemption arc. So I'd say they're the ones that are least likely to live. I also brought that up in my Hound in the Lord of Light video about how Beric goes, he does have a kiss of life. Well, we think he does, because before he died in the books, he passed that on to Lady Stoneheart. So there is some stuff there. If he dies, though, does that mean Thoros has to be dead first? Because Thoros is the one that brings him back. So the one thing I know for sure is some of these guys are going to die. Let me know in the comments who you think they are. We can see that they are building up some tension between Sansa and Arya. Now that we know that Littlefinger was basically setting them up with the scroll that he wanted from Maester Wolken instead of like looking for something to hide. We'll see how that plays out some. But really, I don't expect that we'll see too much outside of this battle. I mean, we see a glimpse of Daenerys. She may want to get involved because it was pretty obvious that she had feelings about Jon leaving when he left in the last episode. And I made a whole video about that. So that's probably going to be hinted at some more. Maybe she will take off and join the fight. 
obviously a lot of people are theorizing that that's going to be an equalizer, which it looks like they're in pretty bad shape there. Absolutely. I could see that happening. I don't think we'll see much King's Landing. We didn't see much in, of anything here. They're probably going to be holding steady, waiting to see what happens. And Winterfell, I think we'll get, you know, 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes of what's going on with them. The cat and mouse game, the chess game that'll be going on between Arya and Littlefinger with Sansa sort of stuck in the middle. So <laughs> I would think everyone's most excited about this battle north of the wall. What else are you excited about? to see in the next episode. The Beric voiceover was just awesome. It really set the tone of what's going on here. What do you think the one's all about? Like, she says, you're scared, aren't you? What are you scared of? Now, do you think she's proposing the idea of taking out Littlefinger, and that's why she's asking if Sansa's worried or scared or whatever? I'm not really sure. It could be like some creative cuts to throw us off, but obviously things are coming to a head with Littlefinger and Sansa and the rest of her family. What about Jorah? I mean, is he going to die north of the wall? It kind of seems unlikely too. It's like he went all the way to get his grayscale cured and then they're just going to knock him off up there. So yeah, I don't know. I think they're kind of pointing us in the direction of the Lord of Light followers not making it back, but we'll have to see. It should be a high-octane experience. It should be really one memorable episode. I mean, if the Field of Fire 2.0 is anything to set us up for what this would be like, you know, this is, I think we're going to all be pretty satisfied. But tell me what you guys think in the comments. Make sure you like the video if you enjoyed it. The official title of episode 6 hasn't been announced yet officially, so I'll go ahead and add that into the title once I find out what it is. It's still just a placeholder on the website right now, so I don't know for sure. But yeah, chime in below. Let me know what your thoughts are. Make sure you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Set notifications so you know when new videos come out. I'm doing a full schedule. There'll be plenty coming out this week. Follow me on Twitter, like my Facebook page, follow my Instagram. You know, you can find out there when new videos are out. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll talk to you soon.